Hey there, fellow students. Test coming up on neuropsychology. Well, I have 12 practice questions for you. Ready? Let's learn psych fast. Question one. Your patient diagnosed with schizophrenia asks, why are psychotropic medications always being prescribed? Your answer is based on knowing that its therapeutic action is the result of their effect on A, the temporal lobe, especially the Wernicke's area, B, dendrites and their ability to transmit electrical impulses, C, the regulation of neurotransmitters, especially on dopamine, or D, the peripheral nervous system sensitivity to the psychotropic medications. The answer is C, the regulation of neurotransmitters, especially on dopamine. So medications used to treat psychiatric disorders work at the synaptic cleft and have an action at the neurotransmitter level. They work especially well in the case of schizophrenia on dopamine. The other choices are not really relevant to schizophrenia or psychotropic medications. Question two. A patient with depression mentions to you, my mother says depression is a chemical disorder. Uh, what does that mean? You respond based on the theory that depression is primarily involved with neurotransmitters of A, cortisol and GABA, B, COMT and glutamate, C, monoamine and glycine, or D, serotonin and norepinephrine. The answer is D, serotonin and norepinephrine. One possible cause of depression is thought to pertain to one or more neurotransmitters. Serotonin, norepinephrine have been found to be important in the regulation of depression. Question 3. A patient asks you if his wife's breast cancer could be caused by chronic depression. Which response is supported by research data? A. Too much stress has been proven to cause all kinds of cancer. B. There has been no research studies done on stress and diseases yet. C. Stress does cause the release of factors that suppress the immune system. Or D. There appears to be a little connection between stress and diseases of the body. The answer is C. Research indicates that stress does cause a release of corticotropin release factors that suppress the immune system. Studies indicate that psychiatric disorders such as mood disorders are sometimes associated with decreased functioning of the immune system. Research, however, does not support a connection between many cancers and stress. There is a significant amount of research about stress and the body. Research has shown that there are some connections between stress and physical disease. Question 4. A patient who has a parietal lobe injury is being evaluated for psychiatric rehabilitation needs. Of the aspects of the function listed, which one will you identify as a likely deficit area? A. Expression of emotion. B. Detecting auditory stimuli. C. Receiving visual images. Or D. Processing associations. The answer is D. Processing association. So you have to know the parts of the brain. The parietal lobe is responsible for associating and processing sensory information that allows for the functions such as following directions on a map, reading a clock, dressing oneself, keeping appointments, and the solution uh, that's right from left. Emotional expression is associated with the frontal lobe. Detecting auditory stimuli, that's the temporal lobe. And then visual images relate that to the occipital lobe. Question five. You prescribed a medication to enhance the GABA system. Which patient behavior will provide evidence that the medication therapy is successful? Is it A, the patient is actively involved in playing cards with other patients? B, the patient reports that I don't feel anxious, as anxious as I did a couple of days ago? C, the patient reports that both auditory and visual hallucinations have decreased? Or is it D, the patient says I am much happier than before I came to the hospital? The answer is B. The patient reports that I don't feel as anxious as I did a couple of days ago. So why is that? Well, GABA is the principal inhibitory neurotransmitter. The medication should provide an anti-anxiety effect. Alertness, psychotic behaviors, and mood elevation, mm, they're not really generally affected by GABA. Question six. A patient with chronic schizophrenia had a stroke involving the hippocampus. Okay, so the patient's going to be discharged on a low dose of Haldol. What teaching are you going to give them about the medication? A, you're going to include the patient's caregiver in the education. 
B, being careful to stress the importance of taking the medication as prescribed. C, you know, provide education at the time when the patient is emotionally calm and relaxed. Or D, you're going to encourage that patient to crush or dissolve the medication to help with swallowing. The answer is A, you're going to include the patient's caregiver in the education. Why? You got to know what the hippocampus does. Hippocampus, that's that short-term memory. So it's going to be difficult for them to learn about the medication. Taking the medication as prescribed and provide education at time of discharge when the patient is, or when the patient's calm and relaxed, you know, those are things to consider. But no, the biggest thing is, gosh, if are they going to actually remember what you told them? In regards to crushing and dissolving the medication, because a stroke, not necessarily because this type of stroke typically does not impact the ability to swallow. Question seven, a patient's family asked whether a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease creates an increased risk for mental health issues. What questions will you ask to assess for any comorbidities? A, has your father shown any signs of depression? B, does your father seem to experience mood swings? Or C, have you noticed your father talking about seeing things that you can't see? Or D, is your dad preoccupied with behaviors that he needs to repeat over and over again. The answer is A. Has your father shown any signs of depression? Why is that? Well, it's about that serotonin. Serotonin and its close chemical relatives, dopamine and norepinephrine, they're neurotransmitters that are most widely involved in various forms of depression. Most researchers agree that the immediate cause of Parkinsonosium is deficiency in dopamine. And so a patient with Parkinson's disease should be monitored for depression. The other mental health disorders of bipolar, hallucinations, obsessive compulsive disorders, well, they haven't really been shown to be connected to Parkinson's disease like depression is connected. Question eight, chemical synapses rely on blank in order to provide communication between neurons. Is the blank diffusion, gap junctions, or satellite cells, or is it transmitter molecules? The answer is D, transmitter molecules. Next question, question nine. When describing the various neurotransmitters, which of the following would you identify as the primary cholinergic neurotransmitter? Is it A, dopamine, B, acetylcholine, C, norepinephrine, or D, serotonin? You got that right, I know. The answer is acetylcholine. Question 10. We're almost done. I hope you're really enjoying this. And if you are, please hit the like button and subscribe. All right. Question 10. A 46-year-old woman presents for review. Her husband reports that she has had an argument with their son, which resulted in him leaving the home. Since this has happened, she has not been able to speak. Clinical examination of her throat and chest is unremarkable. Which one of the following terms best describes this presentation? A. Aprosodia. B. Schizophasia. C. Expressive aphasia. Or D. Akinetic mutism. Or E. Psychogenic aphodia. The answer is E. Psychogenic aphonia. So what is that? Psychogenic aphonia, it's considered to be a form of conversion disorder. So this is really conversion disorder. It's also known as functional neurological symptom disorder, FND. This is a psychiatric, dis- a psychiatric disorder characterized by symptoms affecting sensory or motor function. Aphonia describes the inability to speak. It can be caused by recurrent neurolaryngeal nerve palsy, like, or if a person, you know, is post-thyroidectomy or for psychogenic reasons. Second to the last question, question 11. A patient asks, uh, what are neurotransmitters? What are you going to say? Well, are you going to say, A, how do you feel about having imbalanced neurotransmitters? B, neurotransmitters protect us from harmful effects of free radicals. C, neurotransmitters are substances we use to consume that influence memory and mood. Or D, neurotransmitters, well, they are natural chemicals that pass messages between brain cells. I hope you said D, neurotransmitters are natural chemicals that pass messages between brain cells. So the patient has asked for information. The correct response is most accurate. Neurotransmitters are chemical substances that are found as messengers in the CNS. They are released from the axon terminal, 
diffuse across the synapse and attach to specialized receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. The distractors either do not answer the patient's questions or they provide untrue, misleading information. Don't give those ones out. Last question. Get this one right. A patient's history shows drinking four to six liters of fluid and eating more than 6,000 calories per day. What part of the central nervous system is most affected in this patient? Is it the amygdala, the parietal lobe, hypothalamus, or hippocampus? I hope you got it right. The answer is D, hippocampus. The hippocampus, you know, that's that small area in the ventral superior portion of the brainstem, and it plays such a vital role in things such as hunger, thirst, and sex drive. So just thanks so much for studying with us. I really, really hope that this was helpful for you and you do well on your class and become an excellent provider. If this has been helpful, please share it with another classmate and feel free to click on another video to continue your learning process. Thanks. Have a good day.